In this video, we're going to go over how to deploy the Stingray Traffic Manager virtual appliance onto VMware ESX and provide some best practices. The first thing you want to do is go to riverbed.com and select Stingray Product Family from the Products and Services menu at the top. From here, click on the free Stingray download link and fill out the registration form. After completing the registration form, click Submit and you'll receive an email with the evaluation key. The evaluation key is good for four weeks and gives you the full feature set and performance of Stingray, along with access to Stingray technical support. While we wait for the evaluation key to arrive, we can go ahead and get started by downloading the software and installing it without the evaluation key in developer mode. In developer mode, Stingray is limited to one megabit per second of bandwidth throughput, but can be upgraded later with the evaluation key when it arrives. Click on the link under Stingray Traffic Manager and you'll be taken to a page with multiple different flavors of Stingray available to download, from a pure software installer to virtual appliances for different virtualization platforms. What we want to download here is the VMware OVF. After the download completes, open up vSphere and go to File and then Deploy OVF Template. Click on Browse and then navigate to the directory where you downloaded the file to. The file is going to be a zip file so to see it, click on all files in the bottom right corner and then right click on the file and then click on extract all. This will unzip the file. Once the file finishes extracting, click through the newly created directories and select the .ovf file. Click next to see details of the virtual appliance. Some of these parameters will be changing later. Click Next again to accept the license, and then give the virtual appliance a name. We'll keep the default one here. Next, select the data store you want to store it in, and select if you want to thick or thin provision it, and keep the networking parameters the same because we'll be changing that in just a minute and click Finish. After it finishes deploying, the next thing that we want to do is upgrade the virtual hardware. This will allow us to use the VMXNet 3 network adapter, which has advanced features such as receive side scaling that improve overall performance. Simply right click on the virtual appliance and click Upgrade Virtual Hardware. The Stingray Virtual Appliance comes pre-configured with the single NIC of type VMXNet. Let's go ahead and change that to a VMXNet 3 and add two additional network adapters. Go ahead and right click on the Stingray Virtual Appliance and select Edit Settings. Selecting the pre-configured network adapter, we can see that it's of type VMXNet. Let's go ahead and remove that network adapter here and then navigate over to the Options tab. What we're going to do here is temporarily change the type of Linux from other Linux to Red Hat Enterprise Linux 5, either 64-bit or 32-bit. This is because the VMXNet 3 network adapter will not show up if the type of Linux is other Linux. Right-clicking on Edit Settings again, we go ahead and click on Add and then select Ethernet Adapter from the list. Clicking on Next, make sure to change the type to VMXNet3, and then set the network label. In this case, we'll select Management Network. Click Finish to save the changes. Repeat that same process twice to create network adapters for both the public and the server networks. The Stingray Virtual Appliance comes pre-configured with one virtual CPU and two gigs of RAM. 
It's recommended to increase the number of virtual CPUs to two for most workloads, and more if you're doing CPU intensive tasks such as SSL offloading. Two gigs of RAM should be sufficient for most workloads, but if you expect to have a lot of content that needs to be cached on Stingray, it's a good idea to upgrade the RAM to four. And finally, let's change the operating system type back to other Linux. For production systems, it's recommended to reserve the amount of memory Stingray has been configured with. To do this, navigate to the Resource Allocation tab, right-click on the Stingray Virtual Appliance, and click Edit Resource Settings. Under the Memory Resources section, Slide the reservation slider as far right as it will go, and then click OK to save the changes. Now that all of that is configured, we can power on the Stingray Virtual Appliance for the first time. Click on the Console tab and wait for the appliance to boot up. After the Stingray Virtual Appliance finishes booting, you'll see a screen similar to this with a URL that you can use to access the administration interface and perform the initial configuration wizard. The IP address here is assigned to each zero first based on DHCP and if DHCP times out each zero is assigned 192.168.1.101. If the IP address assigned to each zero does not match what you want it to be Press Alt plus F2 to log into the console with the username of admin and a password of admin. The first thing to check is to make sure that each zero is indeed assigned to the management network. It's not always the case that each zero correlates to network adapter one in ESX. To do this, uh, execute an IF config in the console and then press Control alt to escape out of the console back into ESX. Right-click on the virtual appliance and click Edit Settings. Move the window over to the left a little bit so you can see the hardware address from ifconfig. And then first click on the network adapter corresponding to the management network and make sure the MAC address matches with each zero. Do the same for the other network adapters to make sure that the Ethernet adapters in Linux match with the network adapters in ESX. Once all that has been verified, you can execute a zset initial address to change the IP address of each zero. And finally, open up a web browser to the URL specified in the Stingray console to begin the initial configuration wizard.